Hey beauties, welcome back to yet another makeup tutorial. So in today's video, I am going to be creating with you all this makeup look right here. I tried my best to make it monochromatic. That was the goal for today. However, I feel like the eyes are definitely monochromatic. It's just the rest of the face didn't really come together as I wanted it to in my head but nonetheless it's a beautiful makeup look and if nothing else you can definitely use this palette right here which i used in today's video for like your everyday makeup look i really really love this palette from urban decay i know they have plenty of naked palettes but it's just something about this one that is just like different to me and i was definitely attracted to it and after using it a couple of times i'm definitely obsessed so it will definitely go in my most used makeup drawer uh, from here on out because I will be gravitating towards that palette a lot more. I am going to be giving you guys all the details on today's look. As always, I'm going to dive in, go step by step with you all with the eyes, the base makeup, and everything to follow after the fact. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Before we start, if you are not subscribed to my channel, definitely make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also make sure you're clicking that bell so you can be notified every single time I upload. I know YouTube has not been notifying people, but click that bell anyways because once it starts working you will get the notifications other than that I am just going to stop talking and we're gonna zoom you in just a little bit closer and we're gonna get started on this makeup look so right off bat we are gonna start with the eyes today I'm gonna take it backwards and start with my eyeshadow as I'm used to doing I am gonna be using the urban decay honey palette this palette is so pretty it has such gorgeous brown and orange tone shades in this palette but what i love most about this palette is that it's unlike any other in my collection the browns in this palette are more of like that pukey brown and i definitely don't have that so we're going to be using this today i feel like this is an easy go-to palette for like an everyday look for something soft but not too intense so we're going to be creating something with this today and i'm going to try to use as many shades as i can in this palette now I am going to take my Morphe M441 and I'm going to grab a little bit of Sweet, which is this lighter shade down here on the end. And I'm just going to pop this shade in my crease, kind of like as my transition color. I'm just going to place it right here in my transition. I'm not building the shadow up or anything. Again, it just serves as a transition shade. So I'm just dusting a very, very light layer in my crease and for whatever reason this brush is a little stiff I'm not sure why that brush is stiff so I'm just gonna switch out and use the JH 34 and again just dip into that same shadow and then use the brush to put it in my crease just needed a softer brush I don't know what it is with that brush and why it is the way it is but yeah we're just gonna move on this shadow doesn't really show up too much in my crease it's like very very slight and light but because the lights are so bright um, you probably can't even see it in my crease but again it's just a transition shade so nothing to be too concerned about now I'm gonna take my essence this is the eye blender brush and this was like two or three dollars at Ulta but I'm gonna use swarm and keeper I believe yes swarm is this one right here and keeper is this one right here I'm just gonna mix both of those shades and then pop that kind of in my crease but try to wing the shadow out a little bit because I want more of like a messier look to the eyeshadow so I want to wing it out a little bit and not do such a round and defined eye so I'm just brushing a little bit of that shadow on the outer part of my eye just kind of flicking it outwards and again putting that in my crease as well this is a really really nice eyeshadow palette you know when I first saw that Urban Decay came out with a another naked palette I was just like all right I'm kind of over this but I have received this palette for Christmas and when I used it I was truly impressed by it not so much because it's Urban Decay but more so because of the browns in this palette like I said they're more of like a pukey brown pukey orange I know it sounds gross but it's definitely again like I said in the beginning unlike any other palette that I have in my collection 
and I just I really love it it's definitely very natural for like every day and you can just really create any kind of soft makeup look but you can also make it a little bit more smokier if that's what you preferred just to deepen up the look a little bit more I'm gonna grab Hive in the palette which is this shade right here and I'm just gonna dip my brush into there I am taking a JH40 and I'm gonna concentrate this color on the outer portion of my eye but I'm also going to be bringing this up halfway into my crease and just trying to deepen this outer corner area and just really you know add more dimension more color and depth as I've said many many times on my channel this little brush right here is like my favorite in the Jaclyn Hill collection as far as like eye brushes go just because it's so tiny and I feel like it allows you to just like get really really detailed and really really into that crease area and just really define this outer part of your eye this is like my favorite brush seriously here I'm gonna go back with that first brush and just kind of blend out the edges and everything just making sure everything looks nice blended nothing too harsh and still kind of winging it out out here a little bit just dragging that shadow outward because again I don't want like a round eye I am gonna take a little bit more of that shadow and I'm actually gonna focus it in this inner part of my eye as well not necessarily the lid but like the crease area of the inner part of my eye I think I would like that a little better just to help define the eye that's like just super pretty the way these shadows just kind of melt into one another I really really love it for the shimmer shade on the inner part of my lid I want to grab amber which is like this orange shimmer right here it's like an orange bronzy shimmer and I'm gonna take a little bit of this and I'm gonna pop that on the inner part of my lid I may or may not drag it on the entire lid but we'll see placing this shadow on dry with nothing on it it's not as intense I may spray this brush with a little bit of fix plus spray just because I like my glitter shades a little bit more like melted if you will so I think that's what I'm gonna do I feel like with shimmer shadows most times if you're not spraying your brush down with fix plus spray water eye drops something uh, the powder or the formula of the glitter looks a little bit more powdery on the eye versus being like really melted and mixed into the eye I don't know I mean I prefer it this way you guys can definitely not spray your brush whatever it is that you want to do but this is just what I like so I'm just placing this on my eyelid then I want to go in with drip which is this one right here and I'm gonna place that on the outer portion of my eye kind of where that shadow stops the glitter shadow and the other shadows on the outer corner kind of meet just kind of mixing the two together now that I have that shadow placed for whatever reason I am feeling the need to use Queen which is a darker shimmer shade right in the palette and just place that right on top of that amber shade that we used I don't know I just feel the need to do this so I wonder what the two of these mixed together would look like so I'm just using this brush, no additional product on it or anything like that, just to blend out my shadow around the edges and just kind of perfect the blend. But I think this is really it for the eyes. I'm not going to add any wing liner or anything like that. If you wanted to, you could. I would suggest if you do do wing liner to do like a brown, but that's just my opinion. I'm not going to do any wing liner though. I'm just gonna leave it like this obviously I got to clean up the edges a little bit but overall I really really love the way that the eyes came out again this is a really great like palette if you don't own any of the Urban Decay palettes or you own the other ones I do say or suggest that you go and get this one because to me I feel like it's worth it it's very everyday friendly as you guys can see and it just creates such a soft yet smoky look and I really really love it so we're back lashes are on I have on the kiss lash couture Lux extensions collection this is the style royal silk 
you guys are interested in these lashes, definitely make sure you take a screenshot of the screen because these are so bomb. These lashes right here, as you can see from the packaging, have curls of D, C, and J. To me, these are like a volume set of lashes. If you were to go get your lashes done, this is probably what I would get, something like this. But I love the fact that the band is very thin and they're super lightweight. This is my first time wearing them and I really do like them. So for primer, I am going to go in with the Jelly Pop Primer from e.l.f. I do still have a little bit of the Milk Makeup Primer, but I really wanted to use this again today with a different foundation. I have been loving it. It smells good. And my makeup did last, I'm not even going to lie, but I did use a lot of like radiant things on my skin that day that I used this. Um, the last time so obviously the dew was showing up now i did say that this primer doesn't get as tacky as the milk makeup one but it's still a really nice base for your makeup and it does help it just glide and slide on effortlessly so definitely get your hands on this primer so you guys know i like to double prime another primer that's really good from elf is the elf poreless putty primer i know they recently came out with two more of these which is the hydrating one and the mattifying one I haven't received any of those received, purchased. I have yet to purchase either the matte or hydrating one. Honestly, I wanna try both, but I'm just gonna use this one today and I'm just gonna put this in my T-zone, like right in here where I know I have pores and just really work that product into my skin. I probably put a little too much, so I'm just gonna try and spread this. But it does help to really close out the pores a little bit on my face because they are really big like in my cheek area and I really really dislike that but honestly you can't get rid of your pores. You can kind of do what you can with makeup to make it look a little less seamless and not so visible but you can never never get rid of your pores. I'm going to skip out on color corrector today. I'm just going to be using my translucent powder. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Powder in Light Medium just to set my primer down. You guys should know by now, I just love doing this and my makeup for me doesn't turn out the same unless I'm doing this. So it's kind of been something that um, I haven't stopped doing since I started. So I'm just going to set this down really, really quickly. Just a light, light layer. Sometimes I get a little too carried away with the powder, but I'm just going to keep it nice and light today. And mostly just focusing it in this area of my face because I feel like that's where I need it the most. For foundation, I'm going to be using the NARS Natural Radiant. I have two different shades. I have the Stromboli and I have Syracuse. I'm going to be mixing the two of these today to kind of create a custom shade for me. I find that with the NARS shade range, sometimes depending on the season, it's hard to find my exact match. So I just mix them together just to kind of create my custom shade. I'm just using this um, Sephora. This is their Pro Foundation Brush, number 47. I'm just using this just to apply the foundation, but I'm going to blend it out with my beauty sponge. This is actually the beauty blender. I'm just going to use this just to blend in everything. I think I did pretty well for kind of like making my own shade, but I am going to take a little bit of the foundation and drag it down just to make sure everything's nice and seamless. So just blend it down into the neck. This is a really good brush. I do like to use this um, Pro 47 brush to actually apply cream contour. It's really good for that, but it's also nice for foundation. I guess it just depends on the consistency of the foundation and what you're using. I feel like with thicker foundations, a sponge is definitely better and obviously applying like a smaller amount at a time and just kind of gradually building it up because it is so thick um, is the better solution, but that's just my opinion. But I go through phases. Sometimes I like a brush, sometimes I like a sponge, but for the most part, it's a sponge. 
So we're all done blending that out. Looks nice. Base looks good. We're going to go in with concealer. Before I go in with concealer, I do want to let you guys know I did do two pumps of Stromboli and one and a half pump of Syracuse and kind of mixed it together to make this like match. So just in case you're kind of like the same skin tone as me or using me for a reference, there you go. I know sometimes, most times, actually any time I've ever mixed my NARS foundations. Um, I never really shared that, so I thought that's probably something you guys will want to know. Now for concealer, I am going to go in with the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. Now what I discovered in my concealer collection is that I have a lot of more like my skin tone shade type concealers and not too many brightening ones. So I do want to pick up a few more brightening concealers. This one's more of a brightening concealer for sure. I am going to use my little Morphe M705 brush. It's just like this really flat brush that I like to use to help me blend out my concealer sometimes. I'm not necessarily blending out the concealer, but I kind of want to drag it in a more precise way. So I'm just using this just to help me move the concealer around and then I'll let it sit for a little bit and then start blending it out. Now that my concealer has had time to sit, I'm gonna start blending it out. I don't know, I just always start with the top of my lip, my chin, and then move either to my eyes or my like midsection right here. I think today I'm gonna go with the middle first. And when it comes to like this nose kind of highlight contour, not contour, but highlight with a concealer, I just like to just tap, tap, tap not like moving the product too much around because I pretty much have placed it where I want it and then just blend this out up here then I'm going to take the tip of the beauty sponge I'm going to kind of like pinch it and then I'm going to go in and start blending out this concealer underneath my eye I feel like we have a nice flawless base I really love whenever my makeup comes out really nicely and I think today is definitely a good makeup day. Because, you know, not every time we do our makeup is a good makeup day. Like, let's be honest. Today is definitely a good day. So I am going to set the concealer down. I am going to go in with my Milk Makeup Powder. This is just their um, Blur and Set Powder. It is in translucent medium. So I'm just going to use a little bit of this to set underneath my eyes and my T-zone area where... Of course, I put the concealer. I'm not going to be baking today. Just literally just using this powder to kind of like just set my face. So I am going to press this powder completely into my skin and just really blur out my pores because it definitely does that. On top of using the poreless putty primer and this powder in combination with one another, I feel like it really does blur out my pores really nicely. I feel like I can never talk. This is some good stuff. Now, before we move on to the rest of the face, I do want to revert back to the eyes really quickly. I want to add a little bit of shades down at the bottom. You guys already know what I do for the most part, but I'm just going to take a drip, which is the darker brown shade that we used right here. And I'm going to take that one in M507 and I'm just going to brush this against my bottom lash line. Now I'm going to mix Hive and Keeper. So a little bit of Hive, a little bit of Keeper. And I'm also going to brush that on my lower lash line as well. And just kind of use that to really smoke it out. I just love how soft of a brown, like a brown orange that these shadows together create. It's just, I really love it. It complements my skin tone a lot, really. And I think that's why I gravitate towards orange a lot. But I can't help it. You like what you like. Now, even though we didn't use um, Sting, which is like that dark, dark brown shade right here, I do want to take this shade and push this closest to my waterline. I feel like this is really going to 
do something to the eyes. So I'm just going to take this and press it closest to my lash line and just kind of drag it across. I just love the way that looks. I feel like it did something. Like it just made it all come together. So look at this eye versus this eye. I feel like it definitely did something. So you could go in with either a nude kind of liner or you can use a brown liner. I wouldn't use black even though it's smoky, I want to keep it still bright. And actually, making it bright, I'm not going to use either one of these. I'm actually going to go in with this gold liner from Physicians Formula. This is their, what is this, Shimmer Strips. It's in Smoky Nude Eyes. And it's just like this really nice yellow kind of liner. So I'm just going to use this and line my waterline with that. I feel like this gold liner is actually going to really tie into the eyeshadow at the top and just brings everything together even more so. So now that we have our bottom lash mascara applied, I'm going to go ahead and bronze up the skin. I'm going to be using something a little different today. This is the e.l.f. finishing powder. I had this in my drawer for quite some time, but it was never the quite like right shade for me it's definitely darker I remember funny story one time using this a long time ago I was getting ready and doing my makeup and I was doing it in such terrible lighting and I put this powder all over my face to like set my foundation and when I walked into the Sun girl when I tell you my makeup was looking crazy and I was looking hella dark I was looking hella dark so I'm gonna use this today as a bronzer instead I feel like it's a nice subtle shade to use as a bronzer and it's very buildable so we're gonna see how that works as a bronzer you probably can't really tell the little darkness strip right here but we're gonna see how it works as a bronzer today because I really want to find a purpose for this I just don't know so I'm gonna use my little brush swirl into this and we're gonna use it to you see it's like subtle, but it's there. I think it'll be a nice bronzer. This again is the Elf Finishing Powder and it's a medium dark by the way. So I think it's actually okay as a bronzer. I probably will now use this as a bronzer because I would definitely was not using it before because I wouldn't use that to set my face at all. That's the thing about makeup. Like you can do whatever you want with whatever you want. Like yeah, that was a finishing powder, but you can use it as a bronzer if you want. Like. There's just so many layers to makeup and not a set way to do things all the time. You can just create whatever you want and just create your own little masterpiece. Now I did pull out the Fenty Beauty Bronzer. This is in Island Ting. I do want to get another shade of this. I believe I've said that before. I haven't gotten it yet, but hopefully if I make that trip to Sephora today, I'll pick up a new shade. But this is a little dark. I like it. I don't hate it. But I want to try and use this for more of like a contour today, kind of like what I do with the ABH bronzer. So instead of using the ABH one, I did pull this one out because I did want to see how that would work. It's alright, so I'm now going to use a little bit of the Wet n Wild Translucent Powder. I like using this powder versus using um, like a colored powder, if that makes sense. Just because I feel like it cleans it up better. So I'm just going to use this and just kind of clean that up. Now I'm gonna just dust the powder away now that my nose contour is done. I don't like to let this sit too long because if I let it sit too long then the line underneath here will be too harsh and I don't want that. But this is also why I like to use a translucent powder versus like a translucent medium like the milk makeup powder that I used or any other like colored powder because when you use colored powder down there um, it tends to show up a lot more like harsh if that makes sense so to avoid that I use translucent girl so now that we have taken all that powder off I'm gonna grab my beauty sponge I'm gonna take my Morphe continuous setting mist and I'm gonna spray the beauty sponge first and then I'm gonna take this and just press this into my skin this helps to better set your makeup or just kind of like lock it in place now this morphe continuous setting mist isn't gonna help like keep my makeup in place all day I use a different spray for that not all setting sprays set your makeup all day sometimes they just help to like really 
melt the products, which is what this specific spray does. It really helps like melt the products into your skin and just looks more put together in a way. So that's what I use this for and I just like to pounce it all over my face just to really help with blending the products into my skin. For blush, I'm going to be using Milani's Baked um, Blush in Luminoso. It's a classic blush and I feel like it's really going to complement this look. So I'm just going to apply a light amount on my cheeks. For highlight today, I want to go in with the Ofra highlighter in Bali and it looks like this. This is a really pretty like orange toned kind of highlight and I really, really like it. I think I got this before I went on my cruise a while back, but I'm just going to take a little bit of this on a blush brush. If you guys didn't know or haven't watched any of my other videos, then you wouldn't necessarily know that I like to apply my highlighter with a blush brush now because I feel like it diffuses the product better. You can't really tell where your highlight starts, where it finishes, and I just really like that glow from within look, so I just use... A blush brush so now we're gonna move on to the final part which is the lips and I was having a tough time deciding on what exactly I wanted to do for the lips but I think I kind of have an idea of what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna take this LA girl perfect precision lip liner in the shade cafe and these lip liners are like super super affordable I believe it's only like three dollars two ninety nine something like that but very very affordable lip liners really smooth on the lips they don't get like choppy and chalky and like you know crumble up when you put them on it's a pencil lip liner but it's actually really really smooth so i'm just going to use this to line my lips and of course i'm going to fill them in and then we'll go in with a lipstick now this lip liner is a really really pretty shade on its own but i am going to go on top of it with the Too Faced melted chocolate liquefied long wear lipstick in the shade chocolate honey and it looks like this packaging is super simple and I'm just gonna put again some of this on my lips I think this lipstick is kind of like the same as the lip liner I think I want more of like a matte look to my lips so I'm just gonna take a little bit of translucent powder and I'm gonna put this on Alright beauties, so this is the finished and final look. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's little tutorial. I am on top of my stuff. I'm filming videos back to back for you all. So I hope you guys are enjoying the content that I'm putting out. Honestly, the eyes are definitely very monochromatic. Honestly, I would definitely choose a different blush. Not to say that the Luminoso blush from Milani isn't a gorgeous blush because it absolutely is and it goes with pretty much anything. But when it comes to being monochromatic, uh, I feel like there's not, it's more like brownish in the eyes. So I should have went with more of a brown blush. There is a tart one I used not too long ago uh, that I feel would have went way more perfect or way more better with today's makeup look being that I wanted it to be monochromatic completely, like the whole thing, not just the eyes, but it is what it is. I used the blush already. We're already here. So I'm not even going to pick apart, you know, that portion of it, but I just wanted to kind of like throw that out there. If nothing else, this palette is a really good palette, very, very everyday friendly and wearable, and I really, really love it. So if you don't own any Urban Decay palettes, I do suggest you pick this one up because this will definitely be a staple in my makeup collection. I really, really love the tones of this, and you can, again, like I did, smoke it out. You can even do something a lot more softer. It's really up to you, your preference, and what you like. Overall, I hope you guys enjoyed today's little tutorial. I think I said that, but I don't have anything else to say other than I love you guys so much. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys super, super soon in the next video or vlog, whichever one comes first.